All right, guys, we're out here with the Parrot Disco. Now, one thing that makes this aircraft really cool is that it's part of the SenseFly Corporation. And if you're familiar with the SenseFly EB, this is a $24,000 aircraft. The Parrot Disco is about a $1,200 aircraft. And it essentially has all the same technology built in. It has a flight controller, it has a pitot tube, it's pretty much fully autonomous, very easy to fly. Uh, same motor and, and servo setup for the wings. So let's get started. We're gonna go ahead and launch this. It's gonna be a fully autonomous takeoff. It's gonna climb up to 150 feet and then go into an orbit. And then we'll pick it up from there and we'll take a look at the uh, 1080p camera on the front. All right, guys, now that was a lot of fun to fly this thing. Let's take a closer look at what's inside the Parrot Disco. So like I said earlier, first of all, the Parrot Disco is pretty much a scaled down SenseFly EB. It has the same technology. You'll notice that the wings are really nothing but foam. There's no electronics, there's no wires to hook up. You simply line up the carbon fiber rods insert into the hole and you only thing you got to make sure of is that you line up the servo connection the servo motors are actually inside the body so there's all the electronics are, con are contained in the center section so once you do that again the other wing goes on line up the, the rods make sure your servo motor is lined up with the aileron and plug it in there you go your disco is now assembled it also comes with a 2700 amp, milliamp hour battery. Um, it has similar to a, uh, an XT60 connection. They actually call it an X, uh, XT60 Plus, and I'm assuming it's because they got that little groove on the side, but other than that, it's the same thing. You drop the battery pack in there in the side, fits in there nice and snug, and then you simply plug it into the flight controller. Now the flight controller is something they call Parrot Chuck and Chuck actually stands for the Control Hub and Universal Computer Kit. And this little orange package here contains all of the equipment needed to make this thing work. It's your IMU, it's your accelerometer, it's your gyros, it's your pitot tube, it's your 32 gigabyte memory card, it's your ESCs, it's everything that you need to fly this is all contained in this one little unit as well as your camera. Now on the back, you've got a pusher style prop, which also has a self-folding propeller. So when you're coming in for a landing, what this actually does is right before landing, it uses the sensors on the bottom, which are sonar, and right before touchdown, the prop actually reverses, and then the aircraft flares, and it flops down perfectly every time. Now there are two landing modes with the Parrot Disco. One of them is what they call just a straight in landing where you actually fly the disco, you fly it into the wind, and right about when you're ready to land, you simply push the landing button, it chops the power, descends down, and sets it down perfectly. The other option is a circle landing, but that requires much more space. They recommend, I think it was like 80 meters to have enough space, comes back over to where the home point is, goes into a large orbit and basically spirals down, ending up into the wind and landing. Now you can imagine you're gonna need a lot more area for that. 
One other time that it does do the spiral landing is, is, it, is if you activate the return to home function. So similar to like a quadcopter, we're used to hitting return to home, the copter flies back right over our head, comes straight down. Well, obviously an aircraft or a fixed wing aircraft cannot come back and land you know, straight overhead. So what it does is it returns back to home when it gets over to the point, over the point where it took off, it goes into an orbit. At that point, you then either need to take over with the controls and land it, or if the battery drains to such a level that it feels like it's gonna run out, it goes into a circle landing and it will actually land itself. So let's say you, know, you lost complete control with your radio, and for whatever reason you're incapacitated, the aircraft would come back, it would go into circle mode and orbit until it ran out of batteries, in which case it would then go into a landing mode and land. So Parrot really put together a fantastic package here. Again, very simple. I mean, you're simply plugging in the two wings, you're charging up the battery, you plug in the battery. We can actually do that here. We'll show you how easy it is to boot this up. It's slightly different than your typical RC where you always turn on your transmitter first. We don't do that with the Parrot Disco. We have the aircraft on a level surface, can be in the grass, can be on the ground. We plug in the battery and we simply push the top of the pitot tube here, one click. And you'll notice that once I do that, the system boots up, it starts to glow with a blue light, goes through some self checks, and then once the pitot tube is flashing green, that means the aircraft systems are completely ready, it has a GPS, and it's ready to take off. At that point, you can turn on your radio, you can do all your connections to your, your internet and your tablet, and you're then ready to fly. Right now you just heard the servos kind of kick on. It's now basically just looking for GPS. So there is also some options. We're gonna go into the tablet and kind of show you how you wanna make sure and set those settings for a safe flight. One of them being uh, the level button. So it actually will go in and actually level out everything. You can see now, boom, we've already got GPS. We're ready to fly. If we had our tablet installed, all we would have to do is put our top in Again, this is all magnetic, pops right in there. We'd push our takeoff button like you saw earlier in the video and we'd be ready to blast off. To shut it down, we simply push that button one more time and it goes into a shutdown, it glows yellow and then the aircraft will shut off itself. You then follow that up by turning off the radio. So let's take a closer look at some of the settings in the tablet. Now you can get this on both Android in the Play Store or for iOS in the Apple uh, App Store as well. It'll work on uh, iPhones, you know, Android phones. And what's nice about the controller is it will fit a fairly large tablet. You can either put a phone in here or a tablet and to adjust for that, you just simply push in and rotate. And now you can either put a tablet in sideways or you can put a, a phone in long way. So either way you can fit pretty much any mobile device. Let's go ahead and take a closer look with a mobile device connected. All right, let's walk through a couple of the settings here in the Free Flight Pro app. So here we are on the main screen. We have some menu items up here. Uh, you can check for updates. Uh, if there's an update, obviously it'll tell you here. And in this case, there is actually from 103. We're gonna hold off on that for just a second. It tells you your disco name. Uh, Flight Plan is an app you can buy to give you autonomous waypoints. Uh, I actually have that app on an Android tablet. We'll show you that here in a minute. If we want to go right to the full screen for video, we'll go ahead and jump into that. Now on the controller, I have a tilt. I can actually tilt this up or down. And I can go full up or down with that. We have a return to home button. We have a radar screen. We can tap and switch between uh, a map view or our camera view. This is where all the main settings are. Now, if you're going to use the goggles, uh, you can actually have the goggles uh, turn the screen into a two picture FPV mode uh, automatically. Right now that's disabled. You can configure your eye spacing. We'll go into piloting. We can tell uh, the pitch mode you know, on your sticks. Do I pull back to go up or do I pull back to go down? Normal is, is pulling back, go up. Loiter direction, do you want it to loiter clockwise or counterclockwise? The loiter radius, so again, this is in meters. Figure that's about uh, 120 feet. Uh, three times, you know, the meters, it gives you a rough estimate. You can slide that in the loiter altitude. So by default, it's about 50 meters. I have mine at 60 meters, but you can change that as you need to. 
In the positioning, we have the flat trim button I talked about. So when your aircraft's sitting on the ground, you want to go ahead and once in a while hit the flat trim button. What that does is it zeroes everything out so that your aircraft knows what, trim, what flat is, what level is, and the servos will go ahead and do their uh, thing. There is a calibration button. You can calibrate the compass. It will tell you if it needs to, to do it, but when you first get out of the box, it's highly recommended that you do the calibrations on there. Max altitude, obviously we have the ability to go from 164 feet all the way to 492 feet. Again, you wanna make sure and check with your local law and uh, FAA regulations on that. So we'll keep that uh, for the US here just under 400 feet. We'll just put it whatever you want here. Let's just say uh, 299 feet. Minimum altitude, this is kind of nice because you can set a hard deck on the bottom altitude. So if you don't want to go below 16 feet or maybe uh, you know 25 feet or maybe you got trees in your area that are 40 feet tall so you don't want to go below 45 feet, you can set that. The only time it'll go below the minimum altitude is if you hit the landing button to, to bring it down. And then again, your max distance. Max distance on this is almost a one and a quarter miles away, and it's pretty amazing. We've actually tested that pretty far out, almost to the extents, and we've had no issues with either control or the video link. You can obviously bring this down or up. You can also enable the geofence or disable it. So if you have this set to, uh, let's say, 728 feet, and you have the geofence enabled, when this aircraft flies out and hits 728 feet, it will turn around and return home. If you have it turned off, it'll just continue going until you hit the lost connection distance, which would be obviously out there beyond that one mile range. Under the return to home, we have a few settings here, mainly just how long before return to home activates. One second, six seconds, you can bump that all the way up to 120 seconds. I usually keep it under 10, six is kind of a nice round number, it's higher than five, less than 10, I, I leave it at six seconds. And then the last uh, setting is in your network settings. I leave all this to basically automatic, but you do have the ability to change channels, um, go from 5.8 to 2.4, you can go into manual, you can do indoor, outdoor, you can do all kinds of stuff here. I would recommend leaving that. Let's jump back out of the main settings menu and go into the camera settings, which are right up here at the top. If we touch on the camera icon, we will actually see that we can change the uh, EV or the exposure to plus 1.5 or under 1.5. We can also touch on the camera and go into a couple other things. So we have camera uh, DNG RAW, we have JPEG, we also have JPEG 180, which gives you that kind of 360 camera look. We can also do time lapse and we can set how, how long it shoots pictures on what kind of a time lapse that is. I usually leave mine on the DNG and also leave it on video. Now there's been a question right now. They advertise 1080p. A lot of people are seeing the 720 and they're saying, hey, what's going on? I called Parrot. They said, hey, don't worry about what you see here. This is what your device is displaying the video at. But I did review some of the files and it did look like it's actually shooting in 720p. So it is possible that that firmware update is going to allow the full 1080p. If that's the case, we'll make sure and we'll post a comment about that in a future video. Down here in the lower right, it tells you how much space we have left. In this case, we have 26.26 gigabytes and we're not recording right now. You can also take a picture at any time. And then you have some auto white balance settings. You have auto white balance, outdoors, cloudy, you know, different settings there. And then as well as the refresh rate, I would recommend leaving that at auto. We'll back out one more level. This is basically our flight screen. You can actually control it with the tablet. I wouldn't recommend that, but you can. You can also take your picture there. We won't mess with that. And then if you want to go into this mode, you can see this is actually when you're using the goggles this will actually give you, see if I can get that a little bit closer here. I don't know if I can get it focused or not. But this would give you your, your view from your goggles. Yeah, it won't focus, but we'll, we'll show you the goggles here in a second. So that's a really cool feature if you like the goggles. Now, if you wear glasses, uh, they can be a little bit cumbersome. Um, I did find that I was able to wear my glasses inside of the goggles, so that was nice, and I was able to use them. You do get on the screen, your distance from home, your altitude, 
your GPS signal, and of course all your heads up display. We'll back it out of there. Um, other than that, you got your battery life, 94%. Um, you got, again, you have your uh, space on your hard drive. And here's another cool thing, your flights. So this actually keeps a log of all of your flights. You can go into one of these and you can actually see the entire flight path that you made. And if you have your uh, phone on Wi-Fi or whatever, of course the map will load. I'm not going to do that right now. There it is right there. And this actually gives you your start and stop. You can also rotate this um, and spin things around and look at your whole path. They also have some graphs in here showing you how your battery drained and your altitudes and what you were doing. You can share that on the site. You can keep it private, whatever you want to do. All right, guys. Now, a lot of you have asked, how long does it take to actually get the Parrot Disco up and in the air from scratch? Let's go ahead and get it set up. So we've got the Parrot Disco here. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to install the wings. We're going to insert the rods. We're going to make sure that our servo motor is lined up, pop it in. Turn it around, do the same thing with the other side. Line up the wings, line up the servo, done. Now we'll go ahead and put the battery in. The top hatch is a magnetic cover. It's our 2700 milliamp hour battery. We'll drop that down on the top. It sits in there nice and snug. Plug in the XT connector. Put our cover on. Go ahead and bring it out here outside to a level surface. And we'll push the top of the pitot tube, which is also the power button, one click. While we're waiting for that to boot up, we'll get our radio set up. I'm going to simply use my iPhone, which is running the Free Flight Pro app. Plug that in there and turn on the power button with one push of the button. Let's go ahead and go back over to the aircraft and see where we're at. Now we already have a green light on there which means the aircraft is ready for launch. I have a live image right here. I go ahead and verify that and I do. Check my tilt. I'll take my tilting is working. I'm ready for takeoff. It looks like we have wind coming from this direction. So I'm going to go ahead and get my aircraft positioned into the wind. I'm ready for takeoff. I'm going to go ahead and push the takeoff button. And that's it, folks. The Ferret Disco, easy to launch, easy to fly, and a blast to, uh, to own. See you next time. All right, guys, now if you're thinking of purchasing a Ferret Disco, I highly recommend it. It's a great and fun aircraft to fly. You do need to have a little bit of fixed wing aircraft skills to pilot that down to the ground, but overall, it's a fantastic aircraft. Uh, it's fully autonomous, meaning it takes off by itself. It pretty much lands by itself. It's pretty much hands off in the air. It's just a matter of whether or not you're sending it left, sending it right, or putting it into an orbit left or right. Where do I see this aircraft fitting into the market currently? Um, one, it's just fun to fly. That's, a, that's great. Two, if you love FPV, meaning you want to see that first person view out the front, excellent aircraft for that. I think it's going to have a lot of potential in the search and rescue market. For an aircraft that uh, of this price point, that's this easy to put together and this easy to take apart, and the fact that it has a 45 minute flight time, this is going to be a great aircraft to get up in the air quickly for first responders, especially in like a missing person search, uh, looking for somebody in the woods. They can get this aircraft up quick, they can tilt that camera down, almost 180 down to the ground 
and get it up there and search around while they're getting maybe the more sophisticated aircraft up there. Um, what is it not good for? I would say it's not a cinematography machine. If you're looking to buy this to uh, film movies with it, uh, unless you're just going for that uh, aircraft flying through the air look, you're probably better suited with something with a camera on a gimbal because again, the way that this uh, camera tilts is similar to the Bebop drone in that it's actually doing that digitally. It's not actually moving anything inside. It's almost like a 360 camera that you have the ability to look up and down. And when you go to those extremes, those straight downs, the straight ups, left to right, you, you do start to get some of the edge uh, showing up because it's the digitalization that's actually doing the tilt. So as long as you know those limitations and it fits into one of those categories for you, I highly recommend it. It's a great aircraft. Uh, the only thing we wish they had right now was the ability to buy more batteries and more spare parts because right now all you can get is the aircraft. You can buy just the aircraft in a $999 configuration. Um, you do have the ability to bind this to a traditional RC controller. So if, you're, if you just want a cool wing to fly, that's great. If you want the full autonomous package with the goggles and the Sky Controller 2, it's $12.99. And I, I can tell you it's well worth the money. Uh, a lot of people say, well, it's just a piece of foam. Hey, there's a lot of technology built into that chuck. And the ease of flight and the amount of time that you can keep this up in the air really makes it worth it. So guys, I hope you enjoyed the review. Make sure you like and subscribe to the channel. Check out our other videos. Until next time, fly safe, and we'll see you, we'll see you next time.